The Sony ZV-1 is one of the latest small cameras that has been marketed as made for vloggers. It's a great small camera that takes great pictures and records great videos, but it can also be used as a webcam for Zoom meetings and streaming video. In this video, I'm going to show you what you'll need and how to set up your camera and computer for your Zoom meeting or live streaming sessions. So stay tuned. I have the Sony ZV-1 and it's a great camera for photography and for making videos. It's been marketed as a camera for vloggers and it can also be used for Zoom meetings and for live streaming. Just like other Sony cameras like the RX100 and even the A6000 line of cameras, you can connect to its video feed using the micro HDMI port on the side of the camera. All you have to do is find the right way to connect to that video feed and follow the steps in this video. This setup will also help you use older computers to use modern cameras as a webcam. But before I show you how to do that, first, welcome to Tech Travel Beyond. I'm Chuck, and in this channel I give tips, tricks, and reviews for your tech, travel, and life at home or on the go. And I give you videos like these to help you save money and use stuff you may already have to get things done in today's world. So hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell below so you know when I upload videos like these. And in the links down below, you'll also see affiliate links to the products I mentioned today. So let's get started. In order to set up your ZV-1 for streaming, you'll need to be able to give your computer a clean webcam feed. So you'll need three things. First, you'll need the micro USB to USB charging cable that came with your camera. This will help you power the camera while you're using it. You can either plug it into a power outlet using a USB adapter plug or simply plug it into an external power bank. That's how I normally do it when I'm shooting videos like these. I use a power bank, especially since the ZV-1 batteries are small. This will help if you have a long zoom session or a long live stream session. Second, you'll need a micro HDMI to HDMI cable. This will take the HDMI feed from your camera so you can send it to a device like an external monitor. In our case though, we're going to send it to your computer through the third thing you'll need for your streaming session. What could that be? Well, it's this. I've talked about it in the video highlighted above. This is an HDMI to USB capture device. It's much cheaper than the expensive 4K Elgato Cam Link. This small device does the same thing and does all the processing and outputs your camera signal like a 1080p webcam would through the USB. Essentially, it says to your computer, hey, there's a webcam attached, here's a signal. And this is what makes it less intensive on your computer's processor and why this works for older computers. You might say, hey, doesn't Sony already have webcam software for this? Sure they do, but it only works for Windows computers. The USB capture device card can be recognized as a webcam by Mac, Windows, and Linux. And the other thing is, when you use a cam link software, your computer has to process the signal. And if you have an older computer, it just might slow it down. When you use a capture card, it does the video processing for you. So you basically are just giving your computer a standard webcam signal. And as you'll see later, you simply choose that signal and boom, <laughs> you have uh, the opportunity to be streaming. So before we do all that, let's make sure you have the proper settings for your camera. The first thing you'll need to do is power on your camera. Press the mode button next to the power button and use the control wheel to move to intelligent auto movie mode. This is the film icon with the eye next to it. Press the center select button inside the scroll wheel to select that mode. This will set your camera to automatic mode and it will make it easy for you to have good video output. Just make sure you have enough light in the room where you'll be using your camera as a webcam. Now let's set the camera to output some good video. We'll need to go through the setup menu, so feel free to pause this video or go back as you follow along. Now above the scroll wheel to the right, press the menu button. Press the top of the control ring until you see the menu tabs highlighted. Using the control wheel, move over to the fifth tab with the toolbox picture and it's labeled setup one. Press down on the lower part of the control wheel until you see the first line highlighted. Now, move to page 2 by pressing right on the control wheel. 
move down to auto power off temp and press the center control button. Set auto power off temp to high and press the center control button. Even though you see the warning about overheat, select OK. Then this will help prevent an overheat warning and automatic shutoff while the camera is on for an extended period. Now let's make sure you have proper settings for using the HDMI port to output video. Now in the same toolbox tab, move to page 3. Select HDMI settings. HDMI resolution should be set to 1080p. 24p to 60p output should be set to 24p as your frame rate so you get better exposure. A higher frame rate at 60p will need more light. An HDMI info display should be off, otherwise you'll see the camera's information display in your video. I know I went fast through this part, but feel free to pause and rewind this video. And now next, we're going to connect your camera to the USB capture card. First, connect the HDMI cable into the cam link. Plug the cam link into your computer. From there, it's pretty much plug and play. Now plug the HDMI cable into your camera, but don't press record on your camera. If your ZV-1 monitor is on, the camera monitor signal is already being fed to your computer via the HDMI port. And then on your computer, fire up your video conferencing software. And in the settings, go to video. Select your input to USB camera. Select HD because you're streaming 1080p and your video should be all set. You'll notice minimal video lag and when I compared it to my laptop's onboard camera, it was about the same. Now here are two major things to keep in mind. Make sure you have ample light so your ZV-1 can focus and give you a good image. Ensure your camera is fully zoomed out wide to let in more light using the lower aperture of the lens. Also, if you look at yourself in the live stream or zoom session and find yourself out of focus, simply look up to the lens so the ZV-1 can lock onto your face and eyes for focus. And here's a pro tip. Each time it's your turn to speak, speak to the camera, not to your camera's monitor or your computer screen. And that's it. An easy, inexpensive ZV-1 setup for your Zoom or video conferencing sessions. So let me know in the comments below. What are you using for your Zoom or video conferencing calls? Are you using a ZV-1? Or what are you using for video in your YouTube or Facebook or Twitch streams? Don't forget to check out the links to the USB capture card and the HDMI cable in the description below. You'll also find a great tripod selfie stick which will work great to set your camera up behind your computer too. So if you like this video, hit that like button. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.